Howdy everyone. Apologise for the slightly late start. It's all being quite chaotic today. How's everyone doing? Uh, yeah, oh and sorry, Friday, not Wednesday this week. I've been doing that a lot over the last few weeks. I do apologise just makes it easier for me when I've got a lot on in the week uh, I don't know if I'll keep doing it but um, right now given how busy I am um, it had to be Friday and not um, Wednesday uh, what's going on with this mic is it getting caught up anyhow we have tea Hope everyone else has had a decent week. Mine's been pretty good actually. Eventually, it's been hard, but good. Let's notice I'm slightly lower down. Maybe I should turn. Got to be careful because I can't get the um, chair under the table. That's better. A bit more centered. Hmm. So, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about the ice logic board. If you remember last week, um, hey Twinks, oh, that's good timing. Let me go through. Um, if you remember last week, I received a box for the goodies. All sorts of PCBs and stencils and da 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 da, and I went through those last week. So, as you can imagine, I've been a very busy bunny um, this week assembling oh, some of these things. I mean, my week week started off um, pretty busy, anyhow. I had to. Um, been working on the upgrading the T962 refill oven and oh that fans kicked on big time hope it will calm down a bit. so um, finally on Friday my um, what did I get I, I received the um, new FTDI uh, board that I ordered from eBay um, I really need to um, work I think a few on that I did have a piece of paper here somewhere these are gone Hold on. I know where it is. So this might help. Uh, let me know if the audio is okay as well, please. I didn't do my audio check. Hi, Laurie. Um, so, yeah. Look at this. When I put this in here, I can't actually see. Right, so that's the uh, FTDI board has the uh, standard FTT, uh, FTDI chip, the popular one on it. And surprisingly, as soon as I started using that, rather than the, you know, the uh, USB, serial to USB uh, Chinese device I had, CP, is it CP? I can't remember, it might not be CP. Um, 
and then I tried using the ST if you remember this has uh, USB serial modem in that didn't work either but as soon as I used the uh, FTDI bingo it worked so I was um, able to reprogram the uh, reflow oven just in time so I got that done Sunday night and then I spent um, then I spent Monday and Tuesday um, experimenting with the new uh, firmware on the reflow oven because um, when it started off it still wasn't doing what it should do and I was thinking oh my god so I've wasted all this time upgrading it and it's not not doing it right but um, I got the uh, thermal couple out you know with the uh, meter and stuff and just ran a bunch of tests in the oven and I could see what the temperature differential was in different places in the oven and stuff um, so in the end what I did was I wrote on uh, Monday a new uh, reflow profile taking into account the uh, temperature differences from the actual measured temperatures actually on the board versus you know because the thermocouples that are inside the reflow oven they're just measuring the temperature of the air above the board they're not me measuring what, what temperature the board's at and there's a big difference uh, and there's a big lag obviously so um, I rewrote a custom uh, reflow profile and that worked really well so I then on Wednesday tested a bunch of uh, sorry on Tuesday tested a bunch of you know simple boards and they're all going well so uh, come Wednesday you know I got my uh, PCB out for the ice logic board um, mind you all really difficult when it's in the way of where my screen is. Maybe if I just move this down temporarily, that will help. So that's the PCB here. We'll be a bit wonky. So um, I managed to populate it on Wednesday. Um, I did the first side in the morning, and that's what that looks like. The base. Let's see if I can get to focus. There is a few components on the bottom of the board, uh, mainly decoupling caps under the BGA, which you see in the center here, and then an SD card. And there is also a chip, a protection chip. Yeah, under the USBs. Mm -hmm. Not getting much light here. So, um, let me just put some more light on it. So I did that on Wednesday morning. Uh, it took me two goes to do the pace layer. And then um, after I reflowed, I found two of the uh, caps are tombstoned. If you don't know what that is, that's basically where the component reflows on one side, but not the other side. And it the surface tension pulls the component upwards because the uh, paste 
is going molten on one side and it, the surface tension pulls it like that and if there isn't enough on the other side to keep it down anything 0402 above will tombstone if you're not careful or if there's different um, heat dissipation you know whereby one side's heating up faster than the other uh, you know maybe one side there are caps on the ground plane for example so uh, that was fun but anyhow I managed to get it down and then in the Wednesday afternoon I kind of picked and placed manually uh, using the old proverbial tweezers and it's been a while since I've done um, a reasonable quantity of 0402 type dimension stuff so I had a lot of fun on Wednesday afternoon it took me far too long frankly I thought at uh, one point I might um, might give up and restart it because um, the pace got really dry because the amount of time it was taking I had some issues with some placement but I also had some issues with the components because I didn't realize um, I'd lost a couple of things in amongst others and I should have just been a bit more organized but anyhow um, I managed to get everything on and then I reflowed it on Wednesday night um, I didn't really have much more time to do any testing. I kind of left that um, until Thursday, which is yesterday. Um, and most of yesterday I spent just sorting out stuff. Uh, there were some obvious visual issues with the reflow. I didn't have any tombstoning. Um, I had a I was lucky actually I only got one real ground uh, one real power short which was on the analog supply voltage um, and that was because um, the I've got a resistor and um, capacitor filter for the analog voltage and they're very close together and because I placed them slightly wonky they didn't pull into place and actually one you know they kind of bonded together at one end unfortunately they are meant to be connected at one end but this this was bonding at the other end so I had lots of fun trying to reposition those um, one of the problems with this is you the, the the surface mount connectors you have have a lot of plastic on them so you can't like reheat the board very easily because um, it will eventually melt and particularly if you're using the heat gun I hate it when when you have these you know components that have lots of uh, plastic on them when you're using the um, heat pencil because you have to be really careful not to melt them um, they will reflow okay once but if you start doing multiple reflows and then heat pencils etc it ends up a mess if you're not careful but anyhow I sorted out those shorts so all the power was coming up by Thursday afternoon um, so that was all looking good um, the thing that came out worse on the reflow was the um, Oh, Laurie says I was dropping out a bit and the audio is fine. I apologise. Um, seems to be okay at the moment, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, the, I thought I'd have problems with the connectors because when I was doing the manual placement, I kept rubbing my the side of my hand when I was leaning on the uh, paste and smudging it. So the connector... Um, the connectors on the outer part not the center part where most of all the components are got got a bit smudged by my hand that was really annoying um because i've been making much smaller boards and i'd forgotten so i i have to think a lot more about placement in the future for that when i'm actually doing the um manual placing but surprisingly after the reflow all of the connectors were really good I was I was shocked quite frankly that they managed to come so good given the amount of smudging on the paste um, everything went really well as far as I can tell the uh, FPGA 
you know, the 121 ball FPGA, the hyper, all of that seemed fine. The flash seemed fine. The one that was a real bitch was the STM32, the F7, because it's a TQFN uh, 100 package. Um, they can really be stinkers sometimes, particularly if the paste has gone slightly dry and there's not much flux left in it. Um, and what you get is a lot of bridging and I had an enormous amount I, I think a third of the pins were bridged so I had to go through with lots of um, flux of the soldering iron you know and some you know desolder reels you know um, desolder braid uh, so I spent a lot of the afternoon dealing with that once I got that cleaned up, I figured that'd be okay. I also needed to clean up the USB connectors because they hadn't gone well. Because again, because of the pace had dried, so I had to um, use a soldering iron and lots of flux to clean the USB connectors up. But anyhow, it all it was all looking quite good on the board. I couldn't find any more visual faults. The powers were coming up. I checked the powers. You know, the five volt was good. The three volt three was good. The one volt two for the core, FPGA core was good. So it was all, from a power point of view, I knew all of that was stable. So it was just coming down to, you know, uh, the next stage is, is the STM32 working. So uh, the next thing was to check the USB and that was not working. So yes, it was being powered by the USB, that was working, but there was just no communication between um, the PC, the host, and the um, STM32. So at this point, I could program the STM32 using my ST-Link, you know, the low-cost ST-Link clone. Um, and I could bit bang on the pins and do that in Rust and stuff. But I could not get this bloody USB up. And I was thinking, oh my God, if I change something here. Um... Oh, hi, I post. How are you doing? Are you on vacation? Is that all the way through Christmas now? So I was, I was thinking, oh, crikey. Is, is the USB stuff should work because it's, effect, it's effectively the same chip family as the Black Ice, sorry, the Ice Core. Um, it's the STM32 F730. The only difference is the package, you know, on the ice core, it's a 64 TQFP, which is, you know, the R8 version. Whereas I'm dealing with the TQF, the 100 pin uh, V8 version. But the hardware inside, the core inside should be the same. I think it's just bonded differently, it's bonded out differently to more pins. So I was thinking, what the hell is wrong with this USB? And I, I didn't, you know, I gave up last night. I just could not find a resolution. Um, I also realized that I hadn't soldered down the USBs very well on the ground shield pins um, because I redid the USB landing pattern. Uh, I forgot to check the paste layers. So there was no paste on the shield pin. So I had to manually resolder those as well. That meant that I moved the USB and I thought for a minute, oh crikey, the whole thing's not working now. But uh, then I realized I'd forgotten about that. Fix that. But anyhow, this morning, um, you know, I traced through all the lines and what I was seeing is a short between the D plus and D minus, you know, data pins on the USB. And I thought, well, why is there a short there? Now, there's nothing else connected apart from the STM32 pins. Uh, so I went and double checked those pins to make sure that there wasn't, uh, you know, a bridge. I found two more bridges, but they weren't on USB. They were just really small ones. So when I was looking under the stereo microscope, I found two small ones on the STM32, but not on the USB. And I, you know, I redid the USB connector again. Uh, with the soldering iron, cleaned it all up. It, it was looking fine. I couldn't see anything wrong. And the lines go straight from the USB connector to the STM32. The only other thing they went to is for a little device, which is like a um, protection device. 
which is anti-static protection and over voltage protection device you probably can't even see these these are so small um, I doubt it will focus on it see Focus. It's got six pins. Basically, these are commonly used for USB um, and other applications. And I thought, well, that's the only other thing touching it, and that's there for safety. So, you know, I was beginning to suspect it was that. So I thought I'll have a look at the other USB connector because there's two USB connectors on there, and both have these protection. You know ESD protectors on them and it was the same it was a short on there as well and I thought well what are the chances of that so my next move was remove the ESD protection chip so once I removed that boom the short was gone and as soon as I plugged it in up came the USB bingo you know we were back uh, talking to it oh you've got to go back I post so it's not all the way through Christmas but vacation no nevertheless that's good uh i don't know did you see the start of the stream do you know what we're talking about we're talking about the um ice logic board bringing it up so that was really cool and i thought thank god for that so this morning uh i actually started getting some uh you know communication with the usb so from there it became a lot easier so um, I've changed the pinouts for the STM32 TQFP100 pin obviously in the code and we'll have a look at some of that in a minute um, so I'm now talking to it and it's now behaving itself and um, because I've got the USB up we can do um, should be able to do the programming and stuff so I'm, I'm using the black crab software that we had before and I've just changed that in order to do the um, uh, the new pinouts for the ice logic deck um, one of the other things I had to do is uh, a couple of things haven't come the LEDs didn't come and I quickly ordered some stuff off DigiKey which arrived it turns out the LED, uh, the RGB LED I got, which is a status LED uh, for the board, uh, I, I ended up, it was a 0.6mm by 0.6mm RGB LED. As you can imagine, that's very tiny. That's, that's like smaller than an 0402 in terms of width. Um, and the footprint is for a 1mm by 1mm, which is quite a bit bigger. So I haven't managed to get the LED, RGB LED working, which is real pain because I kind of need that for the feedback when it's programming and that kind of stuff. But whatever. So the other thing that I haven't got yet component wise is the 1.27 pitch uh, debug headers. Um, I thought that what I'd be able to do is I, I had some 1.27 pitch through hole components from ages back when I first started using 1.27 pitch for the tiles and I thought I'll try the um, try the through hole ones but they turned out really difficult to solder so I thought no it's not a good idea I, I went with the surface mount but I know I've got some of these through hole ones somehow so I could just snap off and get the right width and that will give me enough to get a purchase on um, to connect the uh, debug tool but can't find them anywhere um, which is unusual I normally do find things and I normally am right about having them or not so that was frustrating so um, in the end what I did was I had to knock up something um, let me show you so this is what I'm using to program obviously the uh, Chinese copy ST link E2s. Um, so I, what I did was I took an old version of the tile proto board and I put a small mezzanine sized connector on it. 
Mm -hmm. So can you see there? On the back. Because I have the debug signals coming through on the mezzanine connector. And then I put some 0.1 inch pin headers and connected them with the dew point cable. So that allows me to plug it into one side of the um, mezzanine connector. It's, a, it's slightly ugly and awkward. But that enabled me to actually program it, which is good. So I was then in a position for being able to bring it up. Um, so Laurie's asking, so what's the issue with the protection chips? I don't know. It's really strange. I did wonder, you know, if the chips were causing it before I desoldered one of them. So I got one out of the packet and I did a continuity test between the same two pins, the D plus D minus pins. And it's not a short. However, on the board, it's not just connected to those two pins. You have to connect it to VBUS and ground because it's like a protection diode network. So there's about five diodes inside. So it must be something to do with the way it's connecting to ground or something, because when I tested it, it seemed fine freestanding. Either that or it's very heat sensitive or something and I've broken the damn things. Although I find that very difficult to believe because these are just diodes in the package. I mean, it's such a simple package it should be fairly robust um so i don't know so i'm probably not going to use those i think moving forward uh unless i can work out what the problem is um rather annoying that one but anyhow so here is a fully loaded uh ice logic deck from the front and as you can see uh, the only thing I don't have on here I say fully loaded that's not strictly true it's partially loaded simply because I don't have the mezzanine on that I haven't built the mezzanine yet because I'm missing uh, the uh, right angle momentary switches so what you see on here is um, breadboard here got some dip switches on there above that I've got the VGA board, and we'll look at that in a minute. And then at the top, I've got a super tile in the middle with the P mods on. And then on this side, I've got, I'll talk more about this board. This is a proto board, which I've installed some components on for test purposes. And then down here, I've got the seven segment tile. So this is kind of nearly full loaded. And you can see the component tree for um, tile there, which would normally sit under the mezzanine. Can you see the big LQFP 100 pin STM32? That was that was the bugger. That's what set me back longer. Uh, and then the two USBs at the bottom. You can see the holes for a debug connector there in the bottom. And then there's the DFU switch. Uh, above the STM32 is the flash chip, uh, the FPGA, and the hyperam. And also from the side, more importantly, if we look at that side, you can see the um, PGA connector and the audio next to it. Um, I wonder if we can make that a bit easier. And then you see the P mods in the middle of that sandwich. And you can see the LEDs on the prototype board that we're going to use for testing the tiles. Cool. So looking good. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start working on this. What we want to do, I'm going to take everything off apart from I'm going to keep on this one. 
we're going to talk to that okay right any questions before I move on we just I'm going to start taking these off you can field your questions in the meantime this is a seven seg tile Is our uh, bedboard tile cute me um, um, if we can get a VGA off first this is the tightest one actually this is very snug this I probably need to run um, Turn the corner slightly. Very snug fit. I'm really pleased with the fit, by the way. That's the VGA tile for the audio. And uh, this is the um, mod tile. They do fit rather well. I'm quite pleased with how they came out. So now I'm just leaving this one on, our test one. And then what we have to do is we have to connect the mezzanine. The mezzanine connects into, sorry, the programmer connects, the budge programmer connects into this mezzanine connector here. So I'm going to connect that up. Light on the matter. Let me see what I'm doing. I have to be a bit careful with this because I can actually put this in the wrong position from the other. Yeah, I might need to replace some bulbs to make a strong anymore. Let me see if I can get the camera working. Bear with me a sec, folks. I'm hoping this is plugged in. Uh, why is it picking this up? Let's get the 
Bueno. Esto es un This is some plug and plug back in. Is that I haven't used this in a while. It seems to have um gone to sleep, which is strange. Okay. Something happening. Sorry, folks, you may have dropped a few frames for some reason. We've actually got um, something now. So you can see what um, I'm seeing. Let's get the um, The lighting right looks like okay. Get more light on the matter. That's good as I can get it. Let me see if I can just get a um, my focus actually. That is about as good as I can get it. Oh.
Um, Um, let me just check the modem. Hold on. Uh, I'm just going to check the modem. I'll be back in a sec.
Apologies, folks, for the delay. Uh, I'm having problems with the stream. I'm just trying to resolve those. Um, I've got the camera working. It's just the stream's dropped. I'm trying to work out. Mm. Might need to reconnect in a sec. Disconnecting, reconnecting. Oh dear, let's try. This is very strange. I've never had it this bad before. Uh, I'm going to stop and then restart.